Harry Jaffa, welcome to the American mind. Um, as probably the preeminent scholar of Abraham Lincoln in the past uh, generation or more, um, the author of Crisis of the House Divided in 1959 and 40 years later, The Great and New Birth of Freedom, um, I wanted to ask you, what do you think would surprise Lincoln the most about contemporary American politics? What would be the most jarring facts or circumstances of our current contentions that would well, strike him? Uh, for Lincoln, that's for George, George, let me quote again by quoting George Washington in his inaugural address saying, there's no truth more firmly established in the whole economy of nature than the indissoluble union of virtue and happiness. I think that statement of Washington is also a good thematic statement of Lincoln's life. And I think that both Washington and Lincoln would be most distressed by the disintegration of the moral fabric of civilization as it is going on today. And it's interesting also that for Karl Marx, the great enemy of human freedom is morality. Mm -hmm. uh, and Marx has been triumphing in the disintegration of morality. <laughs> Uh, well, th does that suggest this question, is the, uh, is the disintegration of morality something recent or something that's been in train for a very long time? Well, I think it's been in train for a very long time, but it, it's uh, uh, an accelerating pace. Uh, and no, nothing is more clear than the, dis well, the disintegration of the family, for one thing. And the fact that uh, in the black family, 70% of the births are out of wedlock. And in the, in the white family, only 50%. <laughs> yes. And uh, the, result, the result is uh, single mothers and, and unchanged fathers. <laughs> mm -hmm. when, you, when you were a young man, did you know any young women who are having children outside of wedlock? I never even heard of anybody who was divorced. Uh -huh. uh, so the, the measure of the change is enormous. Uh, and I, ne I never, the, the word abortion was almost uh, unknown to even to my vocabulary. So. And that's probably true of atheists as well. Well. Didn't Strauss remark somewhere about this? So. Yes, I, I recorded in my introduction to my new book that uh, uh, he, he said that on, I think, the second visit to America that he discovered that the word atheist could not even be pronounced in polite conversation. I don't know if this is true or not, but that's what he thought. And he said when he realized this, he found that he had come home. So home was America. And it certainly was not true in Germany in the 1920s or 30s. Say a, a little bit, though, about the relation between religion and morality, because you're, you're lamenting the decline of morality. Yeah. Um, but you're, um, you have a more, uh, um, uh, I wouldn't say jaundiced, but a, a, a more hands-off relationship to religious piety in the usual sense of attending services. Uh, are those two things related? Is the decline of morality related to the decline of religion? I think so. Which comes first? Well, I think they go hand in hand. Uh, there's no question what the modern philosophy has almost destroyed any belief in religious principles or philosophic principles. Mm -hmm. I mean, Socrates and Jesus have had, suffered the same fate. <laughs> 